Hello dear friends, welcome back again to another video from my YouTube channel. Dear friends, in our previous videos, we have completed sexual reproduction in flowering plants chapter. From this video, we are going to start with a new chapter, human reproduction. This chapter is very very interesting as well as it is very very important for both board as well as for competitive exams. From this chapter, in your board examination, total 7 mark questions will be there. 7 marks questions will be there from this chapter. And the pattern of these 7 marks are divided into 1 mark 1 question will be there. Sometimes again 1 mark 1 question that means there are 2 questions carrying 1 mark and there will be a 5 mark question. Sometimes it may be 2 marks 1 question and 5 marks. This will be the pattern of questions appear from this chapter in your board examination, my dear friends. In both the cases, 5 marks question will be definitely there in your board examination from this chapter. There are some standard questions we'll discuss in our future classes. And as far as the competitive exams are concerned, total 3 questions three questions will be there in your need question paper need in the need one question carries each question carries four marks that means here we'll get three questions from this chapter in your need examination means here approximately 12 marks 12 marks will be there from this chapter in your need examinations so this is the very very important chapter for second year PUC syllabus as well as for competitive exams. Before we begin the human reproduction in this particular video we are going to discuss the basic things of human reproduction. As we know human beings are the most complicated living organisms present on the surface of the earth. Hence the reproduction process is also very complicated in case of human beings but we will study all these complicated processes of human reproduction in a simplified way to understand the entire concept for our better understanding now in this video as I discussed earlier we'll discuss only the basic things before we go in depth of this chapter we have to understand what we are going to study in this particular chapter. At the very beginning of this chapter, we are going to understand about the reproductive systems. Reproductive systems. Reproductive systems. As we know, in human beings, we have male and female reproductive systems located in two different individuals. Hence, human beings are unisexual. Human beings, they are unisexual. Each individual carries a single sex. Hence, they are unisexual. And human beings, they are, they show sexual. Sexual dimorphism. They show the sexual dimorphism. We know the meaning of the word unisexual. Each individual in human beings, they carry a single sex. Male person is separate and female person is separate. Male person has got a male reproductive system in his body and female person has got a female reproductive system in her body. That is called as unisexual condition. Or it is dioecious. But... Human beings, they are showing a sexual dimorphism. What do you mean by this word dimorphism? This is the combination of two different words. Di. Di. Di means two. Morphism means occurrence or morphology. What is morphology, my dear friends? Morphology means the study of external characteristic feature of any individual is called as morphology. Or the study of external 
विजिबल कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल हाउ आई लुक मैं जिस तरह से दिख रहा हूं ये मेरा मार्फोलॉजी है एक घोड़ा जिस तरह से दिखता वो उसका मार्फोलॉजी है एक प्लांट जिस तरह से दिख रहा वो उसका मार्फोलॉजी है एक गधा जिस तरह से दिख रहा वो उसका मार्फोलॉजी है मार्फोलॉजी का मतलब द विजिबल कैरेक्टर्स एक्सटर्नल कैरेक्टर्स आर कॉल्ड एज मार्फोलॉजी मार्फोलॉजी मींस एक्सटर्नल कैरेक्टर्स व्हाट इज सेक्सुअल डाइमोर्फिज्म इफ एनी इंडिविजुअल इज कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट इन देयर अपीयरेंस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देयर सेक्सुअल कैरेक्टर्स इट इज कॉल्ड एज सेक्सुअल डाइमोर्फिज्म वी कैन क्लियरली आइडेंटिफाई or we can clearly differentiate between boy and a girl in case of human beings they they show the two different morphology the boy, the male morphology is completely different from the female morphology we can clearly identify who is male and who is female just looking at that person just observing the morphological characters of that person we can clearly identify yes it is a boy yes it is a girl that is called as sexual dimorphism since we have unisexual conditions in the human beings and we have sexual dimorphism we are going to study we are going to study male reproductive system male reproductive system and female reproductive system female reproductive system separately in this chapter why we are going to study male and female reproductive system separately because the human beings are unisexual and they show the sexual dimorphism that is why we are going to understand that is why we are going to study the male reproductive system separately and female reproductive system separately because they are located in two different individuals after that after understanding the male and female reproductive systems we are going to study about the gametogenesis process gametogenesis process this word we have studied in the very beginning chapter of your second year puc reproduction in organisms genesis means the process of formation gametes means they are the reproductive cells the process of formation of gametes is called as gametogenesis here gametes are formed gametes are formed or formation of gametes is called as gametogenesis since we have male and female reproductive systems located in two different individuals hence we are studying the two types of gametogenesis separately the first one is spermatogenesis spermatogenesis and we are going to study about the oogenesis oogenesis spermatogenesis means it is a process of formation of sperm formation of sperm it is called as spermatogenesis oogenesis means formation of formation of egg or ovum we know sperm is the male gamete egg or ovum is the female gamete in this particular chapter we are going to understand the detailed process of spermatogenesis how the sperms are formed that we are going to study in detail in this particular chapter my dear friends and we going to study the process of formation of egg in detail we know where these sperms are produced in which organ of the male person's body the sperms are produced sperms are produced inside the testis inside the testis whereas egg or ovum it is produced inside the ovaries ovaries testis and ovaries they are located in male and female body respectively hence these two structures they are simply called as gonads they are called as gonads male gonad is the testis in which the sperm production takes place female gonad are the ovaries in which the egg or ovum production takes place we are going to study the formation of sperm and the formation of egg in detail in our future videos 
The third thing that we are going to study in this particular chapter, it is transfer. Transfer of gametes. Transfer of gametes. We made it very clear in the first chapter that generally the male gametes are motile. They get transfer from male body towards the female body for the fertilization purpose. That process is generally called as insemination. Insemination. Insemination in case of human beings. Insemination means the process of release of sperms into the female reproductive system by a male person. That process is called as insemination. This process we are going to study in detail in our future classes. Then the next thing that we are going to study here at the very beginning of the chapter we are going to study about the reproductive system separately male and female then the gametes are formed after the formation of gametes the gametes get transferred once the gamete get transferred they fuse together the male gamete and female gamete they fuse together that process is called as fertilization we are going to study about the fertilization process what is fertilization it is the fusion of haploid male gamete with a haploid female gamete to form the diploid zygote that process is called as fertilization my dear friends can we apply that definition to the human reproduction it is the process of fusion of sperm with the egg to form the zygote that we are going to study in detail how the sperm is rushing towards the female gamete that is ovum and where exactly the sperm meets the egg what is that place what is that junction that we are going to study in this particular chapter in detail under the heading of fertilization then the next process that we are going to study after fertilization zygote is formed and that zygote it shows a repeated mitotic divisions and as a result of that zygote get converted into embryo and that embryo get attached to the female body inside the womb that process is called as implantation implantation attachment of embryo to the female womb it is called as implantation we are going to study the scientific definition of implantation how the female embryo how the embryo get attached to the womb that we are going to study in detail in our future classes implantation after implantation we are going to study about the formation of the placenta placenta it is a physical connection between it is a physical connection between the female body and the baby it is a connection between mother and a baby inside the womb adanna now kannadalli karalu balli anthe karitivi athwa umbilical cord anthe karitivi a umbilical cord hang form aagutade that we are going to study in this particular chapter placenta after placenta the pregnancy period begins generally the pregnancy period it is defined as the embryonic development period the period in which the embryo get developed inside the womb of the mother inside the womb of the mother that is called as the pregnancy technically pregnancy is called as gestation period gestation period gestation period in case of human beings it is approximately 9 months 9 months or simply it is 280 days 280 days in these days the embryo is getting developed into fetus and the fetus is getting developed into a baby inside the womb of the mother that is called as pregnancy period it is technically called as gestation after completing the gestation period after completing the pregnancy period now the mother want to expel that baby out now the mother want to deliver that baby out that process is technically called as parturition parturition process parturition process means in general words it is a delivery process we going to study 
all these very interesting topics or interesting concepts in this particular chapter from next video we are going to study about the male reproductive system then we are going to study about the female reproductive system if you have any doubts from this concept you can you can ask in the comment box if you like this video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel for your future updates thank you so much my dear friends